Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if that's the case. I am George the Antique Nomad. I am here at my spot at Epic Antique. Actually, you're seeing the space across from me right now. So let's see. It says we've got 13 people with us. And I'm not seeing comments. There we go. Okay, very good. Well, hopefully I have this on right and you're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera here. There we go. So this is my task today. I had the big show in Portland, Oregon. Hey there, Zeno. Good to see you. I had the big show in Portland, Oregon this weekend, and so I took a lot of stuff out of here. So when I came in today, I stripped the rest of the space completely bare, and I've had about an hour, and this is what it's gotten back to at this point. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Let's see if anyone else is here. I know we've got some other folks watching. So basically, I'm just going on live for a few minutes today to kind of show you the aftermath of a show, because... Every time I have a show, it causes this sort of cascading effect where you actually, um, you go to the show, you take a lot of stuff out of stores that you have that you think could sell to potential customers, and then you actually uh, are in a position when you're done of getting to completely recast the booth with new stuff, stuff you had before. So I'm completely redoing this. It's the first time I've had a carpet in here and it fills the entire space. So good. I'm glad it sounds good. Hi, everybody. I see Lena's in there. I see Susan. I see Sandy and Otto. Hi there. I will be up in Snohomish early next week. Not sure which uh, which um, day. Probably Monday or Tuesday, though. Uh, let's see here. Oh yes, the dog. Well, let me take a let me show you a few things that I have. And I see uh, Monica's here. Karen is here. Hi, Karen. Hi, Marty. I'm glad it's working. Hi, Beth. No, I haven't slept much, Beth. Um, and Corinne, it's really good to see you here, too. I keep trying to see who's here, and I'm almost putting people in timeout. So if I do that, please forgive me. You're None of you are in timeout. <laughs> um, hi, Pamela. Hi, Mom's email. It's good to have you here. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff I've got in the booth just for fun. Okay. I will try to keep it steady with two hands. Hello, U812. Well, thank you. I do think some of this is good stuff. What happens is I try to put the big stuff and the proppy stuff and the stuff that goes on walls where you can really see it. And then I blend in around it and then I put all my little stuff in at the end. So today I think we're going to get through about half of it. But what was really important to me is I really wanted these two Jure pieces to be a focal point in the space because they're really neat. Curtis Jure is so in vogue right now with collectors. A lot of people who were around in the 70s recognize it, of course. And they were the same company that did the Renoir and Matisse copper jewelry in the 50s and 60s. So they came by the skills just right. Their stuff often has this artisan's house tag on here. How do I spell that? It's J-E-R-E. -E, and I can actually show you the signature here. C. Jure, 1975. It's kind of silly. Hello, Lois. I uh, I love the dog, too. So, C. Jure. Now, that was just a trade name. It was actually a guy named Curtis and a guy named Jerry, but Curtis Jure sounded much fancier, so that's what they did. And this piece is also a Jure. And I think they look a lot better here than the way I had them. Now, everyone's saying they love the dog. The dog is Hager, and so is this teal-colored gazelle. <laughs> These are 1980s or early 90s pieces. Hager really started doing a lot of really big stuff. And so I'm buying the big pieces because I think they're fun looking and they look like props and all of that stuff. Since it's made up, let's put an accent on it. Exactly. If it sounds French, it must be stylish. Here's a really cool thing. This is a jumbo poster postcard from the Seattle World's Fair. This is Seattle World's Fair at night back in 1962 when it happened. And I think it's really cool. And I have a nice music stand behind it that I'm putting it on. So what I'm trying to do, honestly, is get the booth looking decent for the weekend. I'm probably not going to have time to put all the little stuff in it that I would want to. So I need the big stuff to look good so people will come in and maybe buy some big furniture. And truthfully, everything in here is for sale, even the shelving. Even the shelving, even the fixtures. Now, that lady in the back is... A little bit topless, so I'm not going to get in close to her, but there's a man as well that will go on the other side. They are Dorothy Kindell, 
she did those figural forms in the late 40s. She was a big name California pottery artist back then. Topless art is fine. Well, she is, and she is definitely art. Now, up above that, we have home for sale Henry Broderick, and he was a huge developer here in Seattle. He also was involved with getting the Space Needle built for the Seattle World's Fair, which is why this came out of his collection. And it has a tag on it that he had made that says, used in the construction of the Space Needle 1962. I am going to tip the... Oh, orientation is locked. Never mind. Well, that's actually a good thing because I can't make a mistake. But anyway, this was used to help build the Space Needle in 1962. It is a giant wrench worth about $300. I've got a number of Sasha Brostoff pieces that I'm bringing in for the first time. This little enameled tray is the rooftops. That was one of his famous designs. Skyline is so different today, that's for sure, Bobby. When the Space Needle was built, there wasn't anything tall around it. Now it's the end bracketing the entire city. Here's another Sasha Brostoff with the leaves. I think... No, I didn't turn in the... Uh, I didn't turn on the... Uh, wrong button. I'm not sure why. It just suddenly didn't connect for a minute. It may be because of the, uh, this building was a warehouse. So I'll hold this up and you can see there's a lot of metal in this building. So hopefully if I stay back out of the booth, we won't have that happen again. Um, let me show you some other things I'm bringing in. I probably have 25 of these figures. I'm going to take some to the show in Spokane, and then I'm going to spread the rest around my mall spaces. But these are Hakata dolls. They are a bisque porcelain made in Japan. You can see the Japan label there. And this is something that was done in the 1960s and they were to show what were then vanishing, um, vanishing uh, lifestyles in Japan. So you have some that are sewing and you have some that are cooking particular traditional meals and that sort of thing. Behind it, this vase is Botanica. This is by Pottery Craft. Oh, let's not break anything. It's hard to do this with a mess around, but I'm going to try my best anyway. So this one is Pottery Craft Botanica, and this was done in the late 70s. Now, Robert Maxwell was a famous California pottery designer, and he helped do some of the initial designs for Pottery Craft, but they actually hired a Japanese artist named Masa Fuji to be their designer after that. And so this design is credited to him. And I think really lovely, this is all intaglio, so under the surface. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's watch me break stuff, I hope not. I'm surprised I still have these. I only paid $10 for the set in their Home Guard, which is a really good name. And they are a set of six cordials. So I'm going to eventually Get a bar display set up over here. You can see I'm just getting started. I've got the stereo and turntable to go with your groovy bar. And if you are having a little too much during the party, well, then you can use this twist board afterwards, and this will exercise you. See, it twists back and forth. And pretty soon, if you use this eight minutes a day and do these things, you will have this figure. Just like that. I'm sure it's just that easy. Hello, elderly poodle. Good to see you. Isn't our Robert Maxwell the potter who made the pottery creatures? Yes, he is. The uh, uh, you name it, they were called. And yes, those were wonderful. That was one of the best things he made. Now, these things are ceramic pipes from about 35 or 40 years ago. They were, and behind here, I've got several sizes, but this is the largest. This is McCoy pottery, believe it or not, but this is the Harmony line. This is when they started to really improve their glazes. And you'll see that the overall finish is much better than some of the earlier McCoy. The tiny plane, yes, that is a Boeing's, I believe that's a 737 model. And there are a lot of people interested in this sort of thing because we still have a lot of people in this area who work for Boeing. The little bee here was something they gave to their employees with the little googly eyes. That's from about 1970. I've got a little bit of Art Deco here. The bottom piece here is English. 
I'm trying to think who the mark is. I'm not sure I remember which company made this. Oh, yes, Crown Devon. And then this one is Rumrill, but it was made by Red Wing. Rumrill had things made for him with his label on it that he could sell, and Red Wing was one of the producers along with Shawnee. But the more modern designs all came from Red Wing. And you can see what a fun interest is. Great Halloween color, of course. This is a Canadian artist, Canadian and English. Well, thank you, Susan. I thought it was a great piece, too. This one is Violetta James. And she's no loss, but she has been sold at auction in Toronto for as much as $650, which is what I think this piece is worth. Hi, Paula. Good to see you. Let's see what else I can show you. A couple of geisha woodblocks. Hi, Denise. I see you in the chat. This is an old picture in an old frame. This is Deception Pass. And this is to the north of us here out in Puget Sound between uh, Whidbey Island and the mainland. It's a very beautiful place and a very treacherous place with very swift current. But that's how it looked in the 1920s, and it doesn't look much different today. And then this is what downtown Seattle looked like after the fire of 1889. That's what was left of the Seattle Hotel. And let's see what else I can show you really quickly. I'm not going to be able to stay with you long because I actually have to get the rest of this stuff back in here at least for the weekend with price tags and then I've got to go pick up more merchandise because I'm headed to the show in Spokane this weekend. I'm going to be doing the show at the Interstate Fairgrounds in Spokane Valley. It's the Custer's Antique Show. This will be the 47th year, I believe, that they've done this show. So we are really looking forward to having it back. I'll give you a quick review of some of the stuff on this side of the booth. These are Bristol glass. Sorry about that. That might have been my... Uh, Hi, Teofane. Yes, this is one of my spaces. This is the one at the Modernist Mall in Seattle. This is a little piece of Pacific pottery. This is a great deco design. And my friend who collects Pacific pottery was at Portland, but she says she's not going to Spokane this time, or else I would pull that for her because I know she'd buy it. The candlesticks are Weller. The poodle, of course, is Japanese. There are some Native American baskets as well as African here. And then a couple of neat pieces of Francoma. These are both part of the series vases. They did series vases once a year. They did a limited edition between 1969 and 1983. And they're the V series. So this one's marked V2. This one, I love the color of blue and the fact that it has this little bit of planetary business going down here, which is a holdover from the Greystone Orbit pattern that they made around the same time. And then this one, which looks like it could be right off Bob Newhart's desk, is a decanter. And this was V7, signed John East Frank. She was the daughter who took over after John Frank passed away. Here's another neat Seattle World's Fair thing. Yes, Bob Newhart was a show in the 1970s. I'm dating myself. Um, yes, Bob Newhart was a psychologist in Chicago. It was one of the first shows that was an ensemble cast and was more about the interaction and interplay between the characters as opposed to just being about one central character uh, whose lives everybody revolved around. So it was a pretty good show. I loved it. Um, okay, I've got to find that other piece there. This always makes me laugh. This is the most unlikely Republican candidate I've ever seen. This guy ran for Republican office in Seattle in 1972 in his Tonka truck. He was a little different. <laughs> I don't believe he was elected. Then we've got computer hockey down here, old school from right when they started to expand the league in the late 60s, early 70s. And a big stack of those old highlights magazines from when I was a kid. I remember not really liking them, but reading them every time I went to the doctor's office because it's what there was. Yes, Suzanne Plachette was a teacher, and she was indeed one of the first women in a sitcom to have a life outside of uh, the work life. So 
that was kind of a neat thing. Well, I'm going to flip the camera and say goodbye. I can't stay with you long because I really do have to get all of this stuff in this booth and tagged, and I've got about 20 minutes to do it. So I really appreciate you coming out and seeing. Hi there, Betty. Oh, thank you. That's really nice of you to say. I'm Oh, and the Kitschy Cat. Nice to see you again. Um, it's just so good to be able to share things with you, and I'm so glad to have a receptive, uh, a receptive audience. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Scott. Um, it's just really nice to have people interested, and it just does my heart good, and I am looking forward to showing you more. There'll be video from the Portland show I just did where I was selling there, and so was um, Laura from... Oh, heck, this stupid thing. Um, so was Laura from Left Coast Revivals. Don't tell I'm not supposed to do that. Um, and that was so much fun. So I'll have a video out about that soon. I've got video tomorrow from Springfield, Ohio, when we all had our meetup. And I, I've just got a lot of stuff to share with you. So keep watching. Thank you for being here. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't to the live channel. And I, I, hi, Charnel. No, I am so sorry. A bunch of you have asked for appraisal requests. And I am so far behind because of all of the shows. I'm a little embarrassed, but I promise you that next week I'm going to get on it and try to catch up with all of you because you've all been very patient. So uh, look for that. Look for some contacts about shipments on things. And thank you all very much. And we'll see you again soon. Take care now.